Howdy, AP Pregal. It's Miss Kosh. I am continuing with um, Unit 3, Multiple Choice, from Mr. Passwater. Um, so, here we go. If we have a circle with a radius of 5, along with its equilateral triangle, which of the following gives you the coordinates of point P? Okay, so we have a length of 5. Um, this is 5, 5, and 5, because it's equilateral, which tells us um, this is a 60-degree angle here, which tells us this is 60. Um, it basically, we took, or here's a better way to say, say this in terms of radians, we took the whole pi and divided it into three equal chunks. And so, like, this comes out here at pi over three, and this p is going to be at two pi over three. Um, and so, uh, it's not the pi over six family, so it's the pi over three family. Um, and I would say five times cosine of two pi over three, and then five times sine of two pi over three, um, and call that good. Yeah, this one gives you, 4 pi over 3 is fine for the cosine value, but it would give you a negative sine, which is not a, um, what we want there. Okay, I think this behaves in a similar fashion. If this is 90 degrees, it's splitting this, uh, and so this is the 3 pi over 4 right here, and this is 5 pi over 4 right here, So, which gives us coordinates of P. Um, what did they tell us? Our radius? Oh, there they told us. Um, so it's 10 cosine of 3 pi over 4. Um, but not a negative cosine of 3 pi over 4. It's this one. Um, because, well, cosine of 5 pi over 4 would be here, which is fine, but sine would be negative, and we need sine to be positive. So sine, um, so basically they were checking to see if you knew where, where the positives and negatives are. Um, keep in mind, in this quadrant, we're positive, positive. Over here, we are negative, positive. And so we had the same values. Um, we just need to, we can, pi over 4, and 3 pi over 4 are both root 2 over 2 um, on for x and y. Um, and so we just need to make sure we have a negative for the first for the x and a positive for the y. And so that is what we would do right there. Ah, I already did that. Okie dokie. Um, okay, so we're going to set this equal to negative 3. That gives me cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. So 3 divided by 6. Um, and so unit circle, when does cosine equal negative 1 half? That's here and here. This is 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, and there we go. If you know your unit circle, these are going to be crazy easy. Um, and hopefully, I think my kids do at this point in the year. Either they do or they don't. Um, either they're passing <laughs> or they don't. Never mind. Not funny. Okay. Um, what, pi, or sine is pi over 2. This is going to be um, here and here. So pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Uh, pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Okay, um, I, I mean, these behave in a similar fashion. 2 minus sine of theta is equal to 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, divide by negative 1. We get, well, sine of theta is equal to negative 1. I lied to you. I lied to you to 0 because I subtract and that's 0. So divide away the negative, it doesn't do anything. When does sine equal 0? Sine is our y value, so here and here. Um, 0 and pi, they're not letting us equal t uh, 2 pi. So we have to stay between those. So there we go. Um, and I would expect at this point in the year that my kids are as fast as I am right now. Subtract 1, assuming that they know how to add and subtract. Subtract 1, we're at 1, divide by the negative. Okay, when is cosine equal to negative 1? Cosine is the x value, so this is pi. Um, did I do something wrong? Because I'm not seeing that answer. It's not also, let's see. 1 minus cosine is equal to 2. 1 minus cosine equals 2. Subtract 1, we get 1. Divide away the negative, we get negative 1. Cosine is the x value. When is x negative 1? We can also think cosine is the curve doo -doo 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 -doo, like that, and this is at pi. I think we might have had a typo. Uh, if you found the updated version, you can comment below and tell me, yeah, Ms. Kosh, you were right. They, he fixed this typo. Um, okay. Ooh. Here is a sine curve. Okay, so what is the following is the period? So let's see, how long does it take us to do everything we're going to do? Pi. Um, what is the amplitude? So I see from 3 to negative 1. So the midline here is 1, but that means we're 2 above it and 2 below it. So the amplitude is 2. What is an expression for f of x? Okay, so I see we've got an amplitude of 3. We've got a period of pi, so 2 pi over b equals pi. That means b equals 2. Um, so we had, and we're going down first, so negative 3 sine of um, a 2x seems like a good choice to me. 
Oh, where did do that? Um, here's the next one. What are the constants A and D? Okay, so here we've got a period of 2 pi. So B is just equal to 1. Oh, that, we should have seen that. Um, what's my amplitude? I'm going as low as negative 4 and as high as 0. So my amplitude is 2. I would say G of theta is equal to 2 sine of theta minus 2. So I think um, because we started, we went up first. So that's going to be positive 2 and negative 2. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's see. We started at the top. We made it back to the top by pi. So 2 pi over b equals pi. So b equals 2. Um, a would have to be, what's our amplitude? We go from 4 to negative 8. So that's a total distance of 12. So 6 is our amplitude. Is 2 our midline? Oh, that's not 2. We went 6 above and 6 below. Okay, so it looks, oh, this is, um, we... Okay, well, it can't quite be written as this. It, the, this is probably a typo. Um, it does have a shift. You can always write everything in terms of sine and cosine, sine or cosine, or both of them. Um, but because it's starting at the very top, I think that he intended this to be a cosine of b theta minus 2. Because Oh, yeah, there's our midline. Um, and then the a value would be that positive, what did we just say it was, 6? Cosine or b2 theta minus 2. That's how h of theta, that's how I would write the equation. a equals 6, b equals 2. Um, but it should have been cosine and not sine. Sine, you have to shift it over. You could shift it to this point, and then it goes like that, or you could shift it here and make it negative. If that doesn't make sense to you, go watch my other videos. Uh, the period and the amplitude. The period, how long does it take it to do everything it's going to do? Pi over 2, um, so not pi. The amplitude is from 1 to 3, so the midline to the top, and um, the amplitude's 2. Okay, the function, okay, this does look like a sine curve, so that's good. The, um, the amplitude from 2 to 6, the amplitude is 4, so my A value needs to be 4 and not... Okay, well, let's see if we agree with the D equals 2. We shift it up to the midline is 2. Yeah, that's great. If they give you something like this, um, I would think my kids could cruise through something like this. So hopefully they'll throw in a few that are um, reasonable. Um, okay, what are the values of the period and the amplitude? The period, if we go from as low, the period, was, when did I return to the low? It was four. So the period is four, not two. The amplitude is from negative one to three is the total distance. So the amplitude is half of that, which is two. Which of the following could be an expression? I like to write the equations. I like to write the questions where it's like, here's a graph. Which one is not an equation? <laughs> and I give them three that work and a fourth that does not. Okay, so let's see. With this one, we have um, an a, the absolute value of a is equal to two. This midline here is one, so we, our d value is one. Our period is pi, so two pi over two, so our b value is equal to two. Um, and then, so let's see. This... Okay, this doesn't have, um, that has the wrong B value. This has the right B value, the right, um, the absolute value of A plus one. Oh, did I like, no, 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 D value is plus one. Okay, so that didn't let us eliminate anything. So let's see. Cosine on this one, it says shift it to the right pi over two and then do cosine. No, it would need to be negative. Um, this one says shift it to the right pi and we're at the top. Nope, but the negative tells us we're at the bottom. That's no good. This one says shift it to the right 3 pi over 2, but we're at the bottom since it's negative. Yes, I agree with that one. Um, okay, next one. So we've shifted down 5. Do they all shift down 5? Yes, that's not very helpful. We have a, um, uh, an amplitude of 15, so they're all that's not helpful. Um, our period is pi over 2, so this becomes 2 pi over b. Our b value will be 4. That's not 4. These are. Okay, so that, <laughs> we eliminated 1. And then, okay. Negative 15 sine minus pi over 4, so that means we move to the right pi over 4, and then do this. Um, yeah, I think that could be it. Let's see. This one is saying move to the right pi over 2, and then we go, but it's negative, so we're going to go down first, so no. This one says move it to the right 3 pi over 4, okay, and go up. Nope, we were going down, so it's this one. Okay, so we've got the sine curve where it appears here we go 6 to negative 2. That is 8, so we are 4. Here's our midline. 
at y equals two, so our d value equals two, our amplitude, so the absolute value of a is equal to four. Um, our b value, let's see, how long did it take us to do everything we were gonna do? Eight, so two pi over b is equal to eight. Am I even answering the question they asked? Oh, I don't know. So b is equal to pi over four. Um, our a value, we said the absolute value of a is four, um, so it's not six. We said that the b value is pi over four. Okay. Okay, so a sinusoidal function has a minimum at this point, so at um, uh, 2 pi, negative 1. The first maximum after reaching this minimum. Okay, so that means half of our period, because like our curve, whatever our sine curve is doing, um, okay, something like this, from here to here is going to be half the period, because the whole period is when we return to this point here. So if this is at 2 pi and this is at 5 pi, that means that this is 3 pi away, so this is another 3 pi. Um, so we're at 8 pi. So our, our period is 6 pi, not 12 pi. Um, and the amplitude, okay, so the total distance between them was 8, so the amplitude is half that, the amplitude is 4. Uh, we have a minimum here. The first maximum is that. Okay, so half of the period is pi over 2, so the whole period is pi. And we go from negative 12 to negative 2. That's a total distance of 10. And so our A value, uh, they didn't ask about that. Then what's our midline? The average of those two is um, negative 7. Aren't these fun? Don't you enjoy these? Um, okay. Ooh, over the interval 0 to 0 to pi over 2, um, what's happening? It's increasing. No, it's decreasing, at, um, but it's concave up. So whenever you're concave up, it's increasing at an I lied. This is decreasing, but what's its average rate of change? Its average rate of change is increasing. So it's decreasing at an increasing rate. Um, so from pi over 2 to pi, pi over 2 to pi, we are now increasing at an increasing rate. Oh, but then they didn't, they asked a different question. Oh, goodness, Miss Gosh needs to read the problem. Um, it's positive. No, they're negative. Um, and they're increasing, yeah. Okay, which of the following? Oh, from pi to 3 pi over 2. Pi to 3 pi over 2. We're now looking at this chunk. So these are positive. They're increasing. And they're concave down. So they're positive values that are increasing at a decreasing rate. Let's see which ones. Oh, watch, it won't even be that. The rate of change is increasing. No, it's decreasing. Okay, it's decreasing, so it's not one of these two. It's decreasing because it's concave up. Nope, it's decreasing because it's concave down. Which of the following best describes the rate of change over the interval from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi? It's concave down, so it's decreasing. Um, the, the graph is decreasing. So since the graph is decreasing, the average rate of change is negative. Since the graph is concave down, it's decreasing. So it's negative and decreasing. And that's D. Okay. I think this is very similar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this page. I think we kind of basically did that. Um, this is very similar also. Right? The rate of change on the interval, whatever. It's increasing, decreasing, concave up, all that kind of stuff. Okay, we, we've done that. Um, okay, which one could be an expression? So I see it's been shifted up one. They are all shifted up one. I see that it has an amplitude of three. They all have an amplitude of three. The period is pi over two. So that means two pi over four gets me to pi over um, two. So B is four. All right. That wasn't too bad. Um, the next one, which of the following can be an expression for K? So we've shifted down one. They all shift down one. We have an amplitude of two. Um, they all have an amplitude of two. If we're looking at, we have a period of two pi, so they all need to have a, a B value of one. Okay, so now we just have to see at this one. Uh, no, because it would be negative. It's going down first from there. This one, it says shift it to the right pi and then go down because it's negative. Nope. Uh, it says shift it to the left pi and then go down because it's negative. Nope. This says shift it to the left, two pi, and then start and go down. Okay, that's it. Uh, which could be a, an expression. They all have an amplitude of two. They're sine and cosine differently. Okay, this one, and do they all have a b value of two? And they all have a plus one. Okay, so we're just looking to see 
Um, cos two cosine of two X plus one, that means we start at the very top and we don't have a shift, no. This one, if I shift it to the right pi over two and it's sine, I should be going up. This is going down, no. If I shift it to the right pi, that's then I'm here, it's cosine, so it should be at the top, it's not. This one, I'm shifting it to the right three pi over two, which is here, we're sine and we're negative, oh, so it's that one. I think I already rejected that side. Which of the following is a graph for this guy? Okay, so we have a period of pi and an amplitude of three, and we should go down first. A period of pi, this has a period of two pi. This has a period of pi, but we went up first. This has a period of pi, and we have an amplitude of three, and we went down first. I think it's that. This one has a period of four pi. Nope. Okay. Um, f of, uh, g of x equals cosine has the same period and the amplitude of h is twice the amplitude of g. Oh, okay. So the same period, so we don't have to do any sort of um, stretching. So basically, we want h is going to be equal to, it has a, h has twice the amplitude, so 2g of x. Okay. Um, I mean, these are kind of similar. I would rewrite this and say this is f of x is equal to negative cosine of x plus 1. So then I'm going to go down first, but I'm going to start at the very bottom. So this doesn't start at the very bottom. This doesn't start at the very bottom. This doesn't start at the very bottom. So just based on that information, there's my answer. Sine of x. If I make mistakes, let me know. Um, how am I doing time-wise? Well, I have about time to end a... Let's see. How much does he have? This... Oh, you know what? We're just going to finish the end of his. Um, this is what Mr. Passwater has made available. And then somebody else posted some problems. Um, I, I forgot to write down who this was. So my apologies. I really should give credit. Um, maybe I'll go look on Facebook and see if I can figure out who this came from. Because thank you. I, it saves me the hassle of or the, the work of writing multiple choice questions. They're hard to write, you guys. Did you know that? Okay. The period is twice the... Okay, the period is twice the period. So that means... Um, if I want to have a period of 4 pi, my b value is equal to 1 half. So, and then it's shifted um, by negative pi over 2. So you, this one you have to factor it out. So that's why we like this, this value here. Are these the last two? They are. Okay. So negative 3 cosine with no shift left or right. That tells me I'm going to start at the very bottom. I'm going to be start at negative 3. And this is the only one that does that. And um, 2 pi divided by b, and our b value was pi over 2, means I multiply by the reciprocal. Um, gives me 4. Did this have a period of 4? It sure did. There we go. Okay, the function is a horizontal translation by pi over 2. Which of the following? Um, so this is going to shift us up pi over 2. So this is the only one that... Oh, hang on just a second. Horizontal translation... Okay, oh, I always have to think through these. Sine of, okay, hang on. If I take cosine, we're here. If I want to shift it, horizontal translation by pi over 2, I think what this is telling us is now we're going to be at this, this value, we're now up here. So we now have this, and this is sine of x. But this one actually shifted me to the left. Ooh, clever. And I think we're trying to shift us to the right here. Oh, that was sneaky. I think that's the best answer. Um, I'm cheating because this probably would not be on the calculator part. But let's see. If I do exit, if I clear out from whatever I had before. We are in radians. Um, one of them was cosine x. And then we want to see if I do um, sine of x. Let's do, let's change our window. I think there's a trig window. Okay, that's going to be too much, but whatever. Notice this was shifted pi over 2 that way um, to the right. So I think, ooh, that was clever. Very good. All right, that is um, the, the unit 2 that Mr. Passwater has made available at this point, but I will come back when he has more. All right, good luck. Like, subscribe, comment down below, um, and go practice.